Hey, what is up? My name is Ashley. Welcome to my channel. This is a channel where I show my life as a Christian woman through my journey with multiple sclerosis and hopes that help at least one person making everything that I go through completely worth it for that one person. So today I, whew, I just feel on fire right now. Like just so full of energy that I've got like so many thoughts in my mind and stuff like that, that my heart's, heart is racing. I literally feel like I have like ADHD right now. I do have ADD, but not ADHD. Usually I'm not hyper and I'm very mellow. Sorry if I'm talking fast. But I was just um, running some errands today. Today is Monday, it's my day off. I have Sundays and Mondays off. I was talking to my aunt and we were talking about counting your blessings. And we were talking about like how rough 2020 has been. And I just want to share my secret with everybody. You know, when you find like a secret recipe or you find like a hack that just saves so much time, so much money, or just adds so much value to your life, you wanna share it. You want everybody to know. And I'm feeling that right now. You know how I get through my life Everything that I've been through with, you know, being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and then epilepsy and losing my privileges to drive. People tell me that I'm so strong and, you know, they say that they admire my strength and everything like that. But I just got to be honest. I just got to be real with people. It, this strength that I have does not come from me. It straight up comes from God and I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna tell you what my secret is and what I do what I do is praise so if you are interested in watching this video if learning about how I praise God and what it means to praise God then just keep on watching if you're not there will be a video that comes up next that maybe will pique your interest praise gives me so much strength and praise is something that is super pleasing to God scripture says that he inhabits the praises of his people and you may be wondering like what is praise like what does that mean to praise God well let me just paint a picture for you I like to take the word of God and connect it to the modern day to apply it you know real everyday life you know things have changed a lot with technology and uh, different cultures and stuff like that, but really that much has not changed. It's just technology, culture, but we are still humans and we still act the same way that we did back in the day, back in biblical times. It may just look a little bit different, but it's still the same when you break it down. So in modern day, what do you do? What does praise look like? If we're not talking about God, okay? Think about things that get you excited. If you were to win the lottery, you would be jumping up and down. Just be like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, or whatever. Like, I just want all this money. Like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. You jump up and down. Like everybody reacts in a different way. Another example, um, say you go to, okay, so I live in Ohio. Say you go to a Cleveland Browns game and the Browns are just tearing it up on the field and we are winning. If you're a fan, if you're a Browns fan, you're not just going to be, you know, sitting there being like, oh, that's cool. Real cool. No, you're going to be like jumping up and down, you know, like, uh, body slamming somebody or that's probably not what you call it like chest bumping, there we go, chest bumping somebody, um, high-fiving somebody, hugging somebody, kissing somebody, uh, just dancing, people like paint their faces, people get so worked up and so excited, and why? It's their, it's their reaction to something that's being done before them, to a talent, to something that brings entertainment. Think about your favorite singer or your favorite band. When you go to one of their concerts, you do the same thing and we follow these celebrities all the time and we get so excited when they release new songs when they come out with new movies or 
they release new skincare products or makeup or perfume or cologne, like anything that they do, we get so hyped up and we follow them and, you know, we share that excitement. But then, for some reason, when it comes to God, like all these people that I just mentioned, they've just, you know, been talented in one football games, they've made great movies, they've entertained us, and all these things. But what have they really done for your life? I'm not taking away um, what talent can do, because I will say that there are you know, talented people that show their lives and they inspire you or you hear their stories and it inspires you and it moves you to grow and stuff like that. But, or there are stars that pay, they, you know, donate all this money to charities and they help people out in that kind of way. But think about what is the most that a football game can do for you, that a football player that can do for you, that a celebrity of any kind can do for you the limit gets capped off real, real quick. They don't have the ability to reach out to all these different people to help them, you know, even if, if that's what they wanted to. So, you know, they do their best to help people through entertainment and, you know, bring laughter or joy or something to their life. But then when it comes to God, think about what he's done for us. Like if you claim that you believe in God, if you call yourself a Christian, then, you know, we, we all have this uh, common belief, we all have this common knowledge that Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. As we read in John chapter 1 verse 1 and talks all about that um, and then also in Timothy. And so we know that God was manifested in the flesh and that he came here and lived a life he went through everything that we went through do you ever like hear stories <laughs> from your parents about like back in my day blah, blah 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 i don't know if this is like still a thing but like i can remember stories where my parents would be talking about how they would have to chop all this wood and do all this stuff and ride their bike all these miles and just like these stories that just sound unbelievable and, and you, you know, as a teenager, you feel so unrelatable to your parent. You feel like they don't know what they're talking about. And then as a parent, like I'm not a parent, but just from watching other parents, they look at their kids and they're like, don't they know like that I've already gone through this? So it's really hard to take advice from somebody that you can't relate to, from somebody that's never walked a mile in your shoes. So we have God manifested in the flesh, came to this earth to show us how to do it, to give us instruction and not just because I said so type of instruction, but because I lived it and I did it and I felt everything that you guys felt. I was tempted by everything that you were tempted by and I went through it so that I could connect to you. And then on not only that, but then he ends up sacrificing his life for all of us, for anybody that is interested, that in anybody that is willing to, you know, come to God with open arms. He's already there with open arms waiting for us, but it's up to us to come to him with open arms as well. And so we have this God that has died for all of our sins so that we can be forgiven, so that we can have this opportunity, not just to go to heaven, but to have a relationship with him, to have this comforter, this promise, being filled with his spirit, to be blessed in all these different ways, to always be taken care of, to go through the hardest, craziest things where life is just twisted upside down and still have peace that makes no sense to have peace and joy unspeakable. Like, that is freaking amazing. And there is nobody and nothing else that can do that in our lives. And he deserves, he's the only one that is worthy of everything that we could ever give. Because of what he's done. Like, nobody else has been able to do that for us. So, 
I was just thinking about, you know, how I count my blessings and really praise, praising God is how I get through life. It's how I feel more connected to God. Like I said, he inhabits the praises of his people. He likes to dwell in that atmosphere. I mean, if you've been praised by anybody, it usually feels pretty good to know that you're appreciated by somebody. And I'm sure like to celebrities, it feels amazing to walk on that stage and to hear all those screams and those smiles and those big wide eyes. Even more should be given to the King of all Kings and the Lord of all Lords that gave so much more than any entertainer could give us. So my favorite scripture to go to for praise is Psalm 150. This was written by David. David was referred to by Jesus Christ himself as a man after God's own heart. So this is like the perfect example of what gets God's heart, like how to reach God's heart. If you read through scripture, you will find out real quick about David that he believed that a sacrifice, that an offering given to God, like a gift that he gave to God had to cost him something. He was not okay with giving something to God that costed him nothing, which also is kind of a parallel to the scripture in John 3, 16. This is one of the most quoted verses out there that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe on him shall have everlasting life and not perish. Um, that's paraphrased because I literally read way too many versions. So forgive me if I don't have that perfect, but that is the gist of the scripture. So I like to follow the example that Jesus Christ himself said was how to get to God's heart. So I'm just going to read it right quick. It's Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So after reading that, does that sound like silence? Does that sound like standing still? No, that sounds like somebody that is giving everything in them. I'm again, like visualize being at a concert, visualize who you voted for president winning, visualize your favorite football team winning, your favorite basketball team winning the championship. Like picture how you react. That's our, our natural instinct. And yeah, it looks different for everybody. And in that scripture that I just read, it shows different examples of praise, but they are all action. It's, you know, joy unspeakable. You can't, when something is praiseworthy, you can't just shut your mouth and just be calm and still. Like, you can't contain yourself when something is praiseworthy. Another really good example is when King David got the covenant back to where he was living. When he finally got a hold of the covenant, he had the covenant like on this cart or whatever, and people were carrying the cart. Each step he would take, he was dancing and singing and everybody was celebrating. And then he would take another step and there was like sacrifices offered at each step. And like the glory of the Lord was just like, filled in that place that to me I mean that is a very good picture of what praise looks like so no matter what is going on in your life no matter how bad 2020 is let me just tell you 
you still, if you're watching this, you still have breath in your lungs. You still have salvation at hand. You still have an opportunity to go to heaven, an opportunity to be a part of a church body, an opportunity to reach goals that you have set, an opportunity to have peace, to have joy. You, you know, you have needs that are met right now. And the biggest key to being blessed is perspective. It's not adding things to what you already have, but it's opening your eyes and counting your blessings and thanking God for every single one of them. I'm not buying it that there is a single person that is alive that doesn't have a reason to praise God or to thank Him. And one thing that I am a firm believer of is our circumstances, everything that has gone on in 2020, we can use that as a tool to become stronger and to become greater, to put things in us. Have you ever prayed to God and be like, God, please draw me closer to you or please help me to have more patience, help me to be more kind, help me to be more trusting, help me to, you know, get this job or any request that you ask. We always have this idea in our heads of what it's going to look like to get us there, but nine times out of ten, we're completely wrong on what it looks like on how to get there, and the most important thing is to trust him with the details. Just know that the, the God we serve, Jesus Christ, that he's got it all taken care of. And that all you have to do is put your faith in him and continuously thank him. And I've been at some of the lowest lows. And I know this. And everything that I'm saying that I've said now, like, I knew this in the back of my mind. It was always there. And sometimes it was at the forefront of my mind. And so I would push myself and forget about what I felt or what I saw. And just like sometimes if you have to make a list, make a list. God, I'm thankful that I have 10 fingers and 10 toes. I'm thankful that I can walk. I'm thankful that I can breathe on my own without like an oxygen tank or something. I'm thankful that I can taste food, that I can eat it. I'm thankful that I can see, that I can smell, that I can hear. I'm thankful that I know this person or that person. I'm thankful that I learned this lesson at that time or that time. Like there is always a reason to praise God and to give him thanks. So I know this sounded like a rant, but I was just thinking about this on my way home from talking to my aunt and I literally just felt like I was going to explode. So I just figured that I would share this. I'm sorry if it sounds all over the place. Um, hopefully it doesn't. And hopefully this video turned out good. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please feel free to share this video because 2020 has been a rough year. And what I just talked about is how we get out. Continue to thank him and to praise him no matter what you see, no matter what you feel. And eventually you will start to see change and you will feel the change as well. It may not be that your circumstances change, but more a change that happens in yourself. There is nothing greater than having joy and peace in the midst of a storm, in the midst of your life just falling apart. Like to me, that is just heaven on earth in all honesty. So hit the subscribe button for more videos. Also hit the little bell notification where you can customize the notifications that you would like to receive if you're interested in seeing more of my videos and to start conversation down in the comments. I want to spread joy and spread the gospel and just spread solutions to our problems rather than focusing on just our problem. Thank you so much. See you in the next one. Bye.